here it is. Look at this, what my wife got me. Have a look. Look what she got me. A Victron Inverter Smart 48 volt, 3000 watt with Bluetooth. 230 volts. What a beast. Well, <laughs> as you can see, it has been transported in the wheelbarrow here because the courier, well, we were at work and nobody was at home and the courier just left it at the front gate and then it started raining. <laughs> it delaminated the box already. And so there was serious rain happening and it is so heavy, my wife was not able to pick it up and carry it up here. So I told her to take the wheelbarrow down there to the front gate and pick it up. And well, she already unboxed everything. So I'm really sorry she has spoiled all the experience now. Uh, I said to her, yeah, well, check it that it's not wet inside or something, but everything was fine. It's still in the plastic bag here. So all good. I have not had a chance to look at it yesterday, last night. So this will be my first unboxing, this way, unboxing experience as well with the Phoenix Inverter Smart from Victron Energy. And uh, as, as always, this is not sponsored or something from Victron Energy. This was just my choice to buy one of these for my own money. So there's no sponsoring or something here at all. Wow. That is heavy. Wow. Let me get it out here of this foam. Wow, this is so heavy. I mean, this is this is almost like 20 kilos, you know? You can only do this like... Well, we can have a look at the Phoenix Smart Inverter. Inverter Smart it's actually called. I don't know why that is. Uh, saying Inverter Eco Alarm and there's a mode button. Presumably to change it from normal to eco mode. I don't know what eco mode does. It goes somehow in standby mode or something I've read. All right, let's have a look around. Yay, okay. Well, this is a big no-no for me to mount this one here on the outside of our enclosure. This will be full of dust and insects after a while. And then we've got all this shit in there. That's not good. These, these holes are far too big. And it has active cooling, of course. This is where the hot air comes out. There's a little vent opening up here. And this will, this is where all the insects go in and start uh, uh, breeding a family. This is the big transformer inside. Wow. 19 kilos, it says in the specs. <laughs> and here we've got the bracket. There is a wall mounting bracket here as well for that so that's very nice and then you just hang the inverter on this bracket all right I took out these uh, two screws here at the front and then you can take off the panel to get access we need some light oh yeah that's much better 100% renewable powered light and camera of course so that's how it looks like inside here the box we've got the positive and negative terminal for our DC input M8 volts and this is our AC output here and you can see we've got an active neutral and PE for protection earth our ground and the inverter has already a um, bridge inside between the neutral and protection earth so this is all done and ready to go yeah, it, it uh, even says it in the manual here. The ground wire G connects to the output neutral to ground. It must be repositioned to a dummy terminal if a floating output is required. So it is already connected and they explain how this all works in here. So the uh, neutral and the ground is already connected inside the inverter. And on the other side we have a ground stud here and also some more connections for our alarm this is a relay which you can program from the smart app and this does something very cool i'll talk about this in a minute and we've got the remote here there's a little um, bridge inside and the ve direct to connect to 
uh, other Victron devices we are cabling. But it also has the Bluetooth inside so it can connect to my network here straight away without doing anything else. And then we've got the big air intake here with the fans behind it. Uh, we've got a strain relief here for the 240 volt output. And this is pretty much it. There's nothing else. It's huge. It's huge. Look at my hand. This covers a quarter of the front of the panel. That's insane. That's how big it is. Such a difference. Well, the transformer inside is massive. So, and with this alarm output here, you can uh, program through the app. And you can set alarms like uh, low voltage alarms, for example, to turn on a charger, to recharge the battery once a certain voltage is reached. But apparently you can also um, program this for turning on a fan, an external fan. And they especially mention if you put the inverter into a small enclosure and don't have enough airflow, you can use this alarm setting here for turning on ventilation for this enclosure. <laughs> and I said, well, that's made for me, right? That's exactly what we have here with the enclosure. So decision made, it goes into the enclosure first and see how we go with the heat. I don't know. Um, I, I somehow feel like we should test this inverter before we put it in the cabinet. Why do I talk like this in the camera? Uh, let's hook up the inverter and give it a quick test before we mount it in the enclosure. Okay, so now we have to turn off this inverter here and disconnect everything and also disconnect the battery, positive and negative, and use our resistor again to precharge the capacitors inside this new inverter. Yeah, we don't want to get a big spark again, right? Well, here's again the size comparison. Yeah, well guys, we are doing size comparison here on the channel, right? So you can see the Xia inverter, 3000 watt, and the Victron Phoenix inverter, 3000 watts. Actually, if you are still interested in this inverter here, the guy who initially uh, bought it uh, made a little mistake because he's got only a 12 volt system. But then when I made this video and said, well, it's sold, and I was wondering why so many people are building 48 volt batteries here in Australia, he said, oh, shit, I made a mistake. I can't take Andy's inverter. So it is still here. Uh, get in contact with me if you're interested and we figure something out. But uh, only if you are in Australia, please. Uh, I don't want to send this one overseas. It's too expensive. I had two or three other inquiries from people who are not in Australia. It's still zoomed in. And I said, well, I cannot, I cannot, really, I cannot really send this overseas. It costs a fortune. Again, we are using a 22 ohm resistor, 5 watts, to precharge the capacitors of the inverter. So we are going to um, connect the negative first. We have to connect the positive terminal via the resistor to the positive terminal of the inverter and let the resistors precharge. And you can hear the click inside the inverter. So hopefully that's enough to precharge. We can see the lights coming on here on the display actually. And I think we are precharged enough to connect right now. Oh, no spark this time. Oh, I made it. Just tighten them a little bit. I don't want to go nuts here, right? It's just more like a first test and see what's going on with the inverter. And here we go. This is the whole setup now. So we've got our ground here connected. We've got our negative terminal, our positive terminal. Just making sure they are all nice and tight. And I have connected a three pole cable here, three wire cable with active, neutral and ground. And I have just connected a normal, um, well, a normal power point to it. It's a 15 amp Australian standard power point here, just for a test to test the inverter before we before we install it into the enclosure. What we can do is I can have a quick look at the app. Okay, let's open the Victron app. The solar charge controller is still charging our battery. And ah, there it shows up as a third device, Phoenix inverter. All right, connecting to the inverter. Uh, 
pair and connect. So six times zero at the beginning. Oh, we are in. Oh, nice. Unsecured access. Not now. I'll change the pin later. 230 volt inverting 51.73, 51.743. Yep, exactly what the smart shunt said. Uh, state is closed. This is the relay which we can program here as well. And um, we just go into the settings. Um, mode is on, dynamic cutoff. Ah, here, here's the relay mode. So you can set it to fan and then it controls the fan speed. So as soon as the internal fan turns on or the inverter, you can also have this relay closing and turn off an external fan as well to um, cool your enclosure. That's pretty cool. Output voltage. Oh, you can actually change that. Wow. 50 hertz. Someone was asking, there are not many inverters out there between 50 and 60 hertz. Apparently you use 60 hertz in the US. Is that right? So you can change this in here. Dynamic cutoff. Low battery shutdown. You can set all the voltages. Low battery, reset and alarm. Charge detect. Wake up shutdown. Eco mode search. Okay, I'll just do some voltage measuring here on my outlet just to make sure this is all safe okay so neutral and this one here we've got 220 227 228 volts between active and neutral active and ground same and ground to neutral zero this is all fine so we can plug something in here actually before we turn everything on here i want to see the standby i want to see the standby power of the inverter okay i'm just going to my charge controller here and turn off charging and then we have a look at the smart shunt here and this is only the inverter connected at the moment so we have 18 watts which is half of the other inverter 18 watts standby 0.35 amps all right let's turn this all on pump is turning on Ooh, i can feel airflow it's a speed controlled fan so fan has turned back on the light is back on and all my other gear here I've plugged into my <laughs> test environment. This is all turned on. Uh, I cannot see any any output here from the inverter at the moment, how much power it actually delivers. This is on zero. Do I need to calibrate this somehow? Um, I don't know exactly why we don't show any load here so far. Because there's clearly the fan connected, but maybe that's not enough. Okay, let's um, let's uh, plug in the vehicle again, I guess. Start charging. Oh, the inverter is humming. We are pulling around uh, 1,200 watts now from the inverter. Okay, okay, okay. 1,120 only, apparently. Yeah, the fan is spinning only very slowly. But you can feel the airflow coming out here. Charge this camera here. So one camera is already empty. <laughs> uh, we keep continue filming with the GoPro here. So I can potentially put some mesh or something like filter material inside here to filter the air. I'm not... I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. And I want to have this all in this enclosure. That was the purpose from the beginning. And if it gets too hot, I need to think about cooling uh, of this enclosure somehow. Okay, let's crank up the charging speed. This is only 5 amps at the moment. Okay, get this to 8. And we are now at 1800 watts the inverter delivers. 
fan speed has increased a bit but still not loud oh we're getting an overload warning here from the inverter now with 2600 watt i've got the pump running as well as charging the vehicle now we've got about two and a half kilowatt coming out of the battery here and it says overload warning it's just a warning at this stage and once the pump turns off again it goes away so from 2600 watts around you will get this notification here that we will get close to the three kilowatts it can do a six kilowatts apparently for a short moment so if you have motors to start or something that'll work as well all right so this was just the first test to see if everything works everything is fine uh the two uh, negative points i don't like so far we cannot pair the inverter with our bluetooth network here for all the other devices you know for the smart chant and solar charge controller i thought there was an option to pair this as well because it has bluetooth but um well it said it's a smart inverter it's not that smart at the moment and the second thing i don't like is there should be an isolated separator in between these two contacts they are very close together when you mount them and there should be like a plastic divider in between 50 cent plastic thingy in between here to separate positive and negative terminal because they are very close together and there's the possibility to have a short with a tool or something apart from that everything else seems to work all right so far this first comprehensive test of the victron victron energy uh, phoenix of the Victron Energy Phoenix Inverter Smart, which is not as smart because it doesn't talk to the other devices. Really? I thought it might be easier to mount the inverter when we've got this one out of the box. Right, then here comes the big moment again 20 kilo 19 kilo inverter going in I, um, I drilled uh, two more holes in here, which are tapped with M5, so I can secure the inverter, so, so it just cannot be pushed up and uh, fall off. So these are just like little safety bolts in here. I need both hands. Nice. Yeah, that is, that is bomb fest. Oh, I tell you, I'm just glad I picked the the larger enclosure. The smaller one would not be able to cope with such an inverter. But it was never the plan to buy one of these, actually, you know. I always looked at the uh, Xia, Xia, Xia inverters, and they have got a much smaller uh, footprint as these ones here. This is insane. Well, and if it gets too hot, you know, I mean, the hot, the hot air is coming out here at the top. Uh, I can always put in some fans up here and then we've got the hot air coming out here of the enclosure. But let's wait. Let's see how it performs, how it goes and how often I actually charge the car with this one. Because for the normal load here inside the garage, this enclosure will be totally fine. There will be no issue at all. Okay, so now we've got space for the charge controllers here and my other equipment. So and so and I've now finalized the clamp plate. Uh, we've got the uh, 220 volt or 240 volt output going out. 
We've got the positive coming in, going to the charge uh, to the inverter here, and the negative DC coming in, going to the inverter, and this is our ground, which needs to be connected to all these points here in the cabinet, as well as here in the uh, inverter. And there's another ground point on the solar charge controller then. Because I cannot just connect this one here, this is just for the chassis and hope this is all connected to the ground here. It maybe is connected, but to be on the safe side, I would rather connect this one here directly to our earth point over there. So I have to run another cable down here then. Right. Well, there's a lot to consider, a lot to consider. Okay guys, so far the video from today about the Victron Energy Phoenix Inverter Smart. <laughs> we have successfully mounted it in the enclosure now. Hopefully everything goes all right from a thermal perspective. We are not creating too much heat in here. Well, we will see, right? And I guess we are getting very close now to actually disconnect the garage here from the grid and connect everything, hook everything up to our inverter. And then we have to have a closer look at the configuration of all our devices then, so they work together in an optimal way. Well, until then, you stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again in the next video here in the off-grid garage very soon. As always, guys, thank you very much for everything. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support here. I guess catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.